Here I have a glass tube. I'm going to blow air over the top of the tube. The main tone you heard was the fundamental frequency of resonant sound waves in the tube. Let's try it again. Now listen to what happens when I close one end of the tube. What happened to the tone? It became one octave lower, right? One octave lower means the frequency was halved. If it is two octaves lower, it means the frequency is halved and then halved again. In any case, closing one end of the pipe caused the fundamental frequency to become halved. This tube is 35 centimeters long. When both ends are open, the tone is similar to the B above middle C. When I close one end, the tone becomes the B just below middle C. Let's first look at the 0.35 meter long tube with two open ends. Draw the standing waves, find the fundamental frequency and the frequencies of the first three audible overtones. When I blow air at one end of the tube, the wave travels down the tube. When it reaches the end of the tube, even though the end is open, part of the wave gets reflected. The resonant standing waves in the tube are produced by the interference of the incoming periodic wave and the reflected wave. At an open end, because the air molecules can oscillate in and out, it is an anti-node. Therefore, if I draw standing waves in the tube, I should have anti-nodes at both open ends. For fundamental frequency, I have to fit the least number of loops in the tube. So it has to look like this. The next resonant frequency will be like this. We have to have anti node at both ends. And that's one node, and there are two nodes over here. And the next one. Like this. And then. like that. So we keep anti-nodes at both ends. And for each resonant frequency, we add one extra loop in the tube. Now let's find the fundamental frequency. In this tube, there are two half loops, which means a total of one loop. That means that in this 0.35 meters, in this 0.35 meters, there is one loop. And if you remember, one loop is always uh, half a wavelength. That means uh, one wavelength will be 2 times 0 0.35, 0 0.7 meters. So we have the wavelength of this fundamental frequency wave, but we want the frequency. How can we find the frequency if we know the wavelength? Which equation relates these two? Do you remember this? V equals to frequency times the wavelength. The speed. What do you think is the speed of the wave in the pipe? Inside the pipe, 
we have air. So it, this is the speed of sound in air. If a problem doesn't specify the temperature, we just use the 20 degrees Celsius, which means the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. We're looking for the frequency, and we know the wavelength is 0.7. So this gives us a frequency that is 490 hertz. And this is the fundamental frequency. And this frequency is close to that B above middle C, which is 494 hertz. For the next audible overtone, we have half plus one plus half, two loops. And this one has the half plus two plus half, so three loops in the tube. And this one has uh, four loops in the tube. Um, we can also move this half to here, so we have one, two, three, four, four loops. So this is very similar to the strings case. You have fundamental frequency has one loop, and then two, three, four, two, three, four loops, which means then this will be just like the strings case. The fundamental frequency will be the first harmonic, and the st two loops will be the second harmonic. Therefore, the frequency is two times the fundamental frequency. And three loops will be three times the fundamental frequency. And then four times the fundamental frequency. Now let's look at the 0.35 meter long tube with one closed end. Draw the standing waves and find the fundamental frequency and the frequencies of the first three audible overtones. At the closed end, the air molecules cannot oscillate in and out, so it is a node. Therefore, if I draw standing waves in the tube, I should have an anti-node at the open end and a node at the closed end. For fundamental frequency, I have to fit the least number of loops in the tube. So it has to look like this. node, anti-node, and that's the least number of loops I can have. The next resonant frequency would be like this. All of those have nodes on one end and anti-nodes on the other end. And we add one extra loop for this one, and then one extra loop, and then one extra loop. Now see if you can find the fundamental frequency. In the 0.35 meters, there is one half loop. So in 0.35 meters, there is a half a loop. And every loop is always a half a wavelength. So 0.35 meters equals to wavelength divided by 4. That means the wavelength must be 1.4 meters, 4 times 0.35. That's the wavelength. How do we find the frequency? We use the speed equals to frequency times the wavelength. And what's the speed of the sound wave in this pipe? The, the pipe is filled with air, so the speed is 343. We're looking for the frequency. The wavelength is 1.4. So the frequency, the fundamental frequency, would equal to 245 hertz, which is half the frequency of that fundamental frequency. That's why when I closed one end of the pipe, the frequency becomes halved, which means it's one octave lower. 
the first audible overtone. In here, I have one loop plus half a loop. So it's the one and a half loops, which is three times half a loop, three half loops. And this one has two and a half. So it's five half loops. And this one has seven half loops. So the number of loops we fit into the tube changes by a factor of uh, 3, 5, and 7. If we get 3 times the number of loops in the tube, that means uh, the length of a loop is uh, one third the length of that. That means the wavelength changes by a factor of one third. That means the frequency will have to change by a factor of uh, 3 because the speed of sound in air has to be the same for all of them. So the frequency has to be tripled and that means uh, five times uh, and then seven times. So the frequency for the first audible overtone is three times the 245 hertz and then five times the 245 hertz and then seven times the 245 hertz. An organ pipe that is open at both ends and a string that is fixed at both ends are both symmetric on the two sides and we can hear all of the harmonics first, second, third, fourth, first, second, third, fourth, etc. An organ pipe that is closed at one end is not symmetric on the two sides and the even number of harmonics are not audible. There are only the odd number harmonics that are audible. So it's only the first, third, fifth, seventh, etc. And in case if you are asked to draw standing waves on a test, please try to make anti nodes open widely. Do not make it close like this. Also, a half loop is half as long as a whole loop. So try to make a half loop look like it is half as long as a whole loop. Do not make a half loop as long as or longer than a whole loop. If you follow the links at my website, you can see wave machine demonstrations that match these organ pipe standing waves.